The average student loan debt is reported to be 24835 History has shown that the standard deviation for all student loan debt has been 3250 A student believes that the student loan debt is actually lower in her area, and she takes a random sample of 71 college students in her area and determines that the sample mean is 23,878 and the standard deviation from the sample is 3,500. Is there sufficient evidence to support the student's claim at a 0.01 level of significance? And we're going to round all of our answers to four decimal places. Okay, so looking at this, we're definitely talking about means. So when we set up our null and alternative hypothesis, we're going to write that the null hypothesis is mu is equal to, and then we're going to put in that historical value, which is 2, 4, 8, 3, 5. This is what it's been in the past. The alternative hypothesis is what someone is challenging. Someone's saying, no, wait a minute, I think it's something else. And what the student is saying is they think it's lower in her area. So when you choose this drop down menu option on XYZ, in this case, you're going to say you're going to choose that it's lower. This is our alternative hypothesis. Someone is challenging the historical value and saying, wait a minute, I think it's lower than 24,835. So that tells me this is going to be a left-tailed test because we're looking at less than 24,835. So when we look at our curve, we're going to be looking to the left because we're looking at values less than the mean. So the other thing that we can point out here is that we're doing this at an alpha level of 0.01. Um, and also, because they give us the population standard deviation, it says history has shown that the standard deviation for all student loan debt is 3,250. That tells me I know what my sigma is. My sigma is 3,250. So that tells me we're going to use a Z test, which means we're going to use the normal distribution. Okay, so when we want to find our test statistic and our p-value, there are ways to do it by hand, but we're going to use the calculator. The test statistic, since we're using the normal distribution in the Z test, is going to be Z. So when you choose the option for that drop-down menu, our test statistic is going to be Z. The same thing for our critical value, because we're using the normal distribution, our critical value will be Z. Now, to find the test, test statistic and the p-value, let's go over to our calculator. I'm going to run a z-test. So I'm going to go to stat, over to test, and I'm going to choose z-test. Because we're not giving a list of data values to enter in a list, we're given the statistics within the question. Um, we're going to use the stacks option. And then we're going to put in our historical value for mu, which is the 24,835. Then we're going to put in our population standard deviation as 3,250. And then we put in our sample mean, which when the student um, took a sample of 71 college students, um, the sample mean was 23,878. So that's what I'm going to put in here for our sample mean. Our sample size is 71. I highlighted all the major um, key values here. Here's our sample size of 71. And since we're doing a less than, which is a left tail test, I'm going to choose the middle option. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to hit calculate. Now, the very first option here on the calculator 
is the test statistic. I personally, since we've got a lot of these here, I personally, when I write it on paper, like to put a little T next to my test statistic for Z um, so that I distinguish the difference between the test statistic and the critical value. Um, so if you see ZT when I write things down next, the test statistic, I'm going to put a little C here for critical value for Z. Okay, so our test statistic rounded to four places would be negative 2.4812. So in this box here for our test statistic, I'm going to put negative 2.4812. Uh, For the p-value, that's our second value underneath here. And since we're rounding to four places, my p-value is going to be 0 0.0065. So that's going to go in this box. So this is our p-value. This p-value is a probability. So you should never have something less than zero or greater than one. This should always be a probability um, and it should always be between zero and one. And it could be equal to zero and one, but that's in special cases. It's pretty rare that that happens. Okay, now we're gonna find the critical value for the rejection region. So when we draw a picture for the rejection region, since we're using the normal distribution, we're going to have this nice bell curve. Since we're looking at the left tail, since we're doing a less than or a left tail test, we're going to be looking to the left of the graph. So here's zero. We're going to be looking on the left. So the critical value is going to tell us our cutoff point. Now, because this is a 0 0.01 level of significance, that means, let me color this in red, that means the area that we want to be in here in the rejection region, this area should be 0 0.01. So we're gonna do inverse norm because we're doing the normal distribution with the Z test, okay? So that means when we wanna work backwards to find that cutoff value, that means <clears throat> we need to use inverse norm. So I'm trying to find this value that gives us that cutoff point. So we're gonna go do inverse norm. So I'm gonna to go to second vars and access our distribution list. And I'm gonna come down and do inverse norm and then I'm gonna put in my area to the left, which is gonna be 0 0.01. Now we're gonna use zero and one as our mean and standard deviation since we're talking about Zs and not the raw data, not the Xs. So I'm gonna go pa um, paste and go to my screen and I'm gonna get that this cutoff point right here for my critical value um, is gonna be negative two point, if we round it to, Four places 2.3263. So this is my critical value. This is what I'm going to put in here. Negative 2.3263. Now that we have our critical value, we're going to use our test statistic to determine if we're going to reject or not reject. Uh, the null hypothesis. My test statistic is negative 2.4812. So when I think of this right here as the number line, here's my value of negative 2.36, uh, 3236. Here's my critical value, my cutoff point. Negative 2.4812 falls, if I think about this in terms of a number line, it falls to the left of negative 2.3. Uh, 263. So it falls in that uh, rejection region. So here is my Z test. If I were to mark it on the number line, it would fall somewhere in here because it falls to the left of negative 2.3 because this is negative 2.4. Because it falls in that rejection region, we're going to say reject the null hypothesis, reject HO.
So I use my critical value and my test statistic to make a decision using the rejection region method. And we decided we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. So I would check this one here. Now we're gonna do a different method, but we should still get the same conclusion. We're gonna compare to the p-value. We're gonna use alpha and compare it to p. So p-value is 0 0.0065. Our alpha level is 0 0.01. Now when I look at these two numbers, the p-value is less than 0 0.01. So when I look at that drop-down menu, I'm gonna choose the less than symbol. And when the p-value is less than the alpha level, we say reject the null hypothesis. So I'm gonna choose that option there. So these two should always come out the same. If not, we did something wrong. We should still come to the same conclusion. We're just using two different methods to check to make sure that we're doing this right. Like any good scientist would do, we check, we double check, we triple check, okay? So these are two different methods to check to make sure we get the same conclusion. So now that we know we're gonna say reject the null hypothesis, Okay, so that is telling me that there is enough evidence that this student may be right. So historically, we said this is the student loan debt, but because we're saying reject the null hypothesis, the test statistic comes far enough out from the mean to the left where we have enough evidence to suggest that the alternative hypothesis that this student is um, suggesting might be true. So we are gonna say at the 0 0.01 level of significance, there is enough evidence to suggest that the mean student debt, uh, loan debt is lower than 24,835. So we're gonna choose this one. So when we say reject HO, that's just saying that there is enough evidence to suggest that the alternative hypothesis might be true. If we said do not reject or fail to reject HO, that means there isn't enough evidence to suggest that the alternative hypothesis might be true.